Hello, my name is Joseph Carlson, and this is episode 192 of Gaming with Grief, and I'm calling this episode Guardians of the Galaxy Spoiler Cast with a Friend, but I want to remind you guys that this podcast will hit my website, www.gamingwithgrief.com. Monday morning at 7 a.m., please go there, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the show. You can also subscribe to the podcast in either Apple iTunes, the Google Play Store, or Spotify, and the audio goes up day and date with the pod at 7 a.m. on YouTube, so subscribe to that channel. Just type Gaming with Grief out. You'll see my channel there. You can also find me on Twitter at Just Little Joe. Uh, so this is just a discussion we just had uh, on October 17th, if my records are correct. I beat Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, my friend Martin Chick, who's been on the podcast a few times, he was playing it. We wanted to talk about it on the pod. But as you know, life got in the way. And so it took us a little bit to actually get to our spoiler cast. But I did want to circle back and finish out our thoughts and actually just bounce some of my weird solo rantings about the game uh, with another person to see if I'm crazy. So here is our discussion of, you know, the game. So yeah, here you go, right after this. Martin, you finally, finally beat Guardians of the Galaxy. A few weeks ago, you told me what you thought about it. Uh, what do you think about it now? You've had uh, how long is it? When did you beat it? Probably. Um, I think I beat it around uh, mid-November. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, is when mm-hmm. I beat it. Um, I, I I liked it at, at the beginning of it. Uh-huh. Um, I think uh, the introduction of uh, Quill and his mom is way different than the one in the movie. So yeah. I kind of I, I like that portion of it because you kind of felt like there was more of a connection between him and his mom. Right, because right it is just it. a flashback in the beginning of the first movie, if I remember right. It's like come say yeah. come say goodbye to your mom, Quill, and you're like, what? That's right. rough. <laughs> like watching right. the movie and everything, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did go ahead. Like that. Yeah. So I did. I did like that, and then like you. I mean, there's, there's just uh, different ways, like uh, the, the way he gets his blasters versus uh, the way he gets his blasters in the the movie so but the game itself um i liked how it started out Mm -hmm. i liked the mechanics of it i liked that um when there were certain things that you needed to overcome like freezing you know quill Mm -hmm. all of a sudden was able to call on uh whatever guardian elemental yeah Yeah. well he they said his father was special remember so it's probably if some family like i don't know some recessive elemental gene i don't even know how that works it's a comic (laughs) book you're not like, wait, how are they able to do that? It's like, dude, you're just talking to a tree, so you're fine. And a, a raccoon is having a conversation with you. It's like, yeah, you have elemental pause, no big deal. Yeah, like, yeah. don't, don't, don't sweat the small stuff, as they say. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed that. I, I like being able to switch not just between like your normal uh, blasters. Now you can switch between um, these elemental things and in each element you, you get uh, as the game progresses. And I like being able to do that because sometimes, you know, um, your normal blasters aren't doing that much damage, mm-hmm. but then you can call on like the freeze or the mm-hmm. electrocution. And uh, I, I really like that. But I do understand like what you mentioned earlier in your other podcast was that um, <laughs> every time you leveled up, no matter no matter what, everybody was stronger than you. Yeah, so there was never gaining any sort of ground on doing more damage than the people right. you're fighting. Well, I think too. I've noticed it in games, and I think I did talk about it on the pod. Like this idea of like a you're like you're in a stairwell kind of, and like yeah. I want to be like one step, either on the same playing field or like one step above the enemy, so you feel like you can actually overcome yeah. whatever it is. And we've played. Remember, we played. Uh, D&D Dark Alliance, the Icewind Dale game, and it was terrible because no matter what level you were or what challenge rating you got up to, you, you're, well, you'd be like at a new level, you're like, I'm going to smack the crap out of this goblin, and you're doing the same amount of damage that you did two hours before that or whatever, and it was just rough because it was... It, like I think Guardians does that too, where it's like, yeah, we can't make your guns that much more powerful. We really want you to lean on your you know, your squad. We want you to tell yeah. Gamora to go over there and stab people, which was good. And I liked how the powers were. I don't know if you maxed out rocket, but his maxed out I thing did. was pretty cool. Um, but that's still, the, I mean, it's cool that you're a leader and everything, but like you still want to contribute a little bit. I think all the reviews I've read when they were talking about the gameplay, everybody gave, 
the gameplay like the worst rating because it was just like, well, the the story's good, the team dynamics is good, but like again, like I told you, I think when you initially beat it, I was like, it just felt like my blasters didn't do anything. You know, my my stock blasters, no matter how much components I put in them to upgrade their damage or whatever, it just felt like. Okay, well, I guess I'll let you guys do everything. Like, I'll order Rocket over there to attack, but I'm just going to stand here and waste time for one of my elemental abilities to, you know, cool down or something. So, it, so that, that's what I think also. It kind of reminded me of, like, when you were a kid and you were you had you played guns and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And then, you're, you know, when you're shooting, like, your friend, yeah. and you're like, Bang, oh, you're, you're dead. dead. Yeah, you're yeah. dead. And, and he wouldn't die. Nah. You know, yeah. Like, no, yeah. You. Yeah. You. No, I shot you. No, you didn't. Like, yeah. No, you didn't. So, it felt like all the enemies were like, no, you, you didn't hit me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, you didn't so hit you, me. I think that was the purpose of the game was that uh, because of like the story of it. And we'll get into that whole thing. But like the the game itself wasn't that it's Peter Quill against the world. Right, the right. game itself was family. It It, it is. Yeah. It is a uh, group. And so. You yourself can't do it alone, but mm-hmm. you and your group can overcome everything. And so when you started calling in like everybody with their special abilities and then you use your special abilities, you do you do really good damage. Like Gamora was over. She was yeah. Complete. Drax, I was a little disappointed with some of his abilities. Yeah. Gamora was the one where you're like, whoa, she's like a dark horse. Like her yeah. stabby stab abilities and stuff are pretty crazy. Even Groot, like his hold down abilities were kind of cool, you know, like yeah, I like Groot. that was pretty good. And yeah, it was, I mean, I get that like the whole idea is like, you're a leader. You're not, you know, it's not the power fantasy of you taking everybody on. I just, it, it felt like as, as we've all had bad bosses, it just felt like I was the one who wasn't contributing to the group project where I was telling everybody what to do. And they're just putting in a lot more work and effort than I could ever put in. And that felt, you know, it, it was like, ah, if I could do just a little bit more damage, you know, then I would feel like, yeah, you know, like, so, uh, I, yeah. Well, I think that was part of the game is that, I mean, when you play the game um, and you're used to playing games to where like you're you're the one doing all the damage and you're the one showing up and you're the one like sniping from a distance or DPMSing or something like that. Uh, DPS, not DPS. <laughs> <laughs> wow, DPS. I don't even know what that is, but sure, yeah. D- DPMS is a, is a <laughs> AR it's an AR building. Uh, they, they make they make AR. So anyway, uh, but well, that would have probably done a lot more damage than my ray guns in the game. If I had an AR fifteen, <laughs> well, I don't know. There's, they have space armor. Maybe not. I don't know. The whole thing is that when you're used to that and you're not used to using your squad, it's really difficult to remember. Oh, that's right. I have a I have a yeah, squad. But you true. as a leader, I mean, if you think about it in the workforce, you as a leader, your job isn't to go out there and dig a ditch. Can you help dig mm-hmm. a ditch? Absolutely. But your job isn't to dig a ditch. Your job is to tell your your group, your squad, what to, to do, go yeah. dig the ditch yeah. while you go and try to find other things to do. And I think that yeah. was the part of the game. But just like you mentioned, I'm a I'm a fighter, so I right. I want to be in. I want to be in it. I want to be doing just as much damage as they are, and I and you're not. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, there has been some critique. I don't know. Square Enix has been, or Crystal Dynamics that made uh, Guardians has been sold to a conglomerate, uh, Embracer Group. So they were part of Square Enix, but they're not anymore. So a lot of people are like, man, I guess we're not going to get not only with the licensing problem with Marvel, but I guess we're probably not going to get another one. So you know. It's too bad because I, I do think like we'll talk about the story. I you know I did two podcasts about it because it it, it kind of came out of the blue. Everybody's like, all the reviews I heard is like, what a great game about leadership, and it was there and like we've talked about it, it was good. You know the fact that you could side with people in an argument and reinforce like, hey, why don't you listen to Gamora? She's trying her best or whatever. Or you could just listen to her and how they change storylines from what I know on the movie. You know she killed Thanos. Spoilers, okay. um, that kind of stuff. Um, that was all really good, but like the idea of um, the girl Nikki, the daughter, and I forget her mother's name, but her dying and her ghost coming to you, or maybe it's part of your brain or whatever. Uh, the idea of her saying, "You have to, you have to tell my daughter, like you can't make her accept that I'm dead, but you have to tell her that I'm dead. She has to hear it, yeah. you know." And that kind of came out of nowhere. Nobody really talked about it in reviews um, that I was reading, and so. For me, that just like blew me away. Where I was like, "Whoa, this game became something else that I was not expecting." But I thought it was yeah. dealt really good. The only thing I'll say is, which I said in my spoiler review, is 
that end scene where you're talking to her and she's trying to get the party ready for her mom, you know, I'm yeah. like, help me get, help me get her gift and all that stuff. You can screw that up. I don't know if you did, but I screwed it up and I had to redo it. And that yeah. felt, that felt a little cheap of like, well, why can't this just be this, my ending of like, Hey, I told her what I could tell her the game ended, but when the game steps in and says, no, you did the wrong thing. I think that was, I was like, Oh, you know, like, is there a right or wrong answer where you're telling someone that their mom died? Ah, prob- I mean, there's probably wrong ways to go about it, but it is what it is. I don't know. I, it would have been a more interesting conversation with reviewers, I think, if it's like, here's the ending that I got, and I told her X, Y, and Z, and this is what she said to me, and another reviewer is saying, oh, I said X, Y, and Z, and this is what she said, but now everybody has to have the same, oh, no, you have to do this, otherwise it will start over again, and you have to go through this conversation which I was like, but I still think all the stuff they said was good. You know, her being a teenager and you saying, well, I know what it's like, you know, my mom died too. And she goes, I don't care. Like that doesn't bring my mom back. I was like, that's a good, that's a good, like, you know, response. Cause the adults will say that too. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do like, I think that was my favorite part of the storyline uh, was between Nikki and him. You know, they, he shows up at base and uh, he meets Nikki and uh, he likes her right away, yeah. and so um, he can't get in the bay. So she takes him through the sm- the, the 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 back way alley, yeah. and then finally. And I like all the the, the dialogue they have, like between where she's like, "My yeah. mom is rough on me," and you could you could reinforce that and go, "Yeah, she is too rough on you," or you could say, "Hey, she's going through a lot. She's commanding a squad and trying to be a leader and trying to be a mom." You know, and I liked all that. All that stuff was really good. I really liked it. Yeah. Um, uh, so with with that though. Um, I do like I do like how what Nikki became, and then it's this this fight between um, uh, him, like Quill, trying to bring Nikki, his uh, potential uh, supposed daughter, right. uh, back down to reality. Hey, you know what? I can help you. That sort of thing. Um, and she's this all powerful type. Yeah, leader. that Raker Raker was the cult leader, and I forget what they called the entity. I think it was just called the entity, but it was basically like you had to buy in and believe in it and stuff yeah. like that. And I do, this is a trope in a lot of fiction of, Hey, we can bring back your loved ones. That's a big trope. And For I, sure. I like that it, it would take one person to go, I don't think you can bring them back. You know what I mean? Like right. that idea of like, what if I, but then they'd probably kill you anyway. Cause they tried to kill the guardians when they were like, Hey, we need to get out of here. Like yeah. I, I do like that idea though of, Hey, you know, especially at the end of him saying, this is what it is. Like, I'm sorry, but sooner or later, you know, your mom will be gone, you know, and, and really, um, you know, that happened with with Drax too. And I love that whole side story of him just wanting to be with his wife and daughter. They were making dinner or whatever. And they're like, you can't be here, Drax. You can't, you know, you're literally in your mind right now. You cannot just stay here, you know? And so, I like all of like all that I think was really good. And that's why, again, it came out of nowhere when I'm playing the game going, OK, we're going to talk about what it's like to be a leader and all this stuff. And then reinforcing it through the dialogue. But then that midpoint when it turned and was like, oh, no, this is, you know, I was I, I like the game for reasons that people haven't talked about. I think uh, yeah. not to say I'm the only one. I'm sure somebody online has written a blog or done a video essay, but there's too much content out there for me yeah. to figure it out. So. I, I I to where it sounded like people didn't like the combat. I actually liked I actually liked the combat. I like their twist of the combat. I'm once again I'm not a, I'm not a big group um, use your group to fight type person. So that's that's different for for me. Um, but in the sense of like the the story is that as you play it, I, I liked the story. I liked I liked how it was progressing. I liked that you could interact like it uh they would get into an argument and then quill could either not say anything or side one way or the other like you mentioned um that was really good and i like the dialogue as well not only were the choices presented but i like the choices you had because i think i played a while ago i played the original dragon age again the origins and you know you get dialogue options and some of those options you're like my my character would not say any of these things is there none of the above and i think with this going through his quill when he was talking to Nikki, I was like, oh yeah, that'd be something I'd tell her. You know, I'd I'd say that to her like, hey, calm down, you know, or like, hey, you know, be nice to your mom or like, you're like, yeah, like I could see him saying these things. Like it was written really well. Like the, the, the uh, conversation options seem plausible, not 
oh, I got to make a choice, I guess, you know? Right. And, uh, but, so I like that. And I, I think all that comes together very nicely. It's too bad. Again, I never say never, but I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see more from them. So that's kind of a bummer, you know? So, right. So I, I, uh, was, I liked the voice acting. Oh yeah, that was good a too. Really good job. Um, and of course, watching the movies before that. Uh, so when you're playing the game, and they got people that sounded like you would think Quill or Rocket or Drax uh, or Gamora would sound. They did a really good job with the voice acting. Yeah, and one thing I'll say though, a testament to the performances. When I saw the trailers, I was like, Ugh, "This all looks like." B team stuff, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't look yeah. good. But as the game progressed, like you said, you're like, man, I'm really liking Drax, and I'm really, you know, I'm really liking Rocket. And and the fact that he, there's a scene he has to get by water. He doesn't like water, yes. and and then that unlocked an ability because he literally uh, mm-hmm. confronted a fear. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting way to unlock an ability, not just, uh, oh, he remembered that he can do this. Yeah. You know, it was like, oh no, he did the thing, and now he can do other stuff. I really, li- yeah. I really like that. Well, the other thing that I also liked is the skins, right? Nobody ever talks about like the skins or anything. Oh yeah, like that. the cosmetic, the, like yeah. Yeah, the, the skins were really, really cool. I mean, you had like classic. You had right. from the game. You had even from like if they were the to old... go toward the the syndicate type. Uh, oh right, the cult uh, or whatever. The cult, yeah. yeah. The, the skins were really well done. And I, I really liked them. I didn't collect them all. I collected like 90% of them. But the skins were, they, they were really well done. Yeah, I think uh, I got like 80% of them. <clears throat> um, what I also like was the, um, what was I going to say? I like that, uh, you know, it, it, and, it, and it did seem too that everybody got like an equal time in the sun in a way yeah. where I didn't feel like, even Peter being the main character, I think they gave equal time to Gamora and Groot and all those people to figure out. Um, I kept going down to Groot's area and talking to Raccoon, being like, is there a way for me to understand him? Kind of exhausting yeah. dialogue options. And I don't know if you did that, but Raccoon's uh, Rocket was like, no, man. He's so rare that like nobody speaks his language. And I do like the idea of the translation ship, which, truth yeah. be told, they could do that to me if it was a reasonable amount of money because... You know, you want to just be able to talk to people. You don't want to worry about he. You know, you just be like, yeah, hey, no, I speak whatever. Um, I like that. Uh, I thought the very end though was weird, like because yeah. you have to fight uh, Warlock again, and I was like, why? Like we yeah. had this big emotional thing with Nikki. Every you know everything's not great, but we're doing good. We got the whatever, and then it was like, wait, we're fighting Warlock, and I was like, why or why? Why that? You know, like I well, don't know. Well, how they, well, how they did it also. Like they, they ended it, first ending. They ended it in true guardian fashion. You know, they're walking down like the like the gangplank yeah. type thing toward their ship. You know, they're waving. You know, yeah. I wouldn't. They didn't have that plan, but it's like they had like we are the champions. They should have, yeah. But the, but you know, they're they're like pointing type like what's up? Yeah, yeah, that's us. That's us. We did it. You know, that sort of thing. And then. Then it switches over to where you have to fight him again, and you're going, uh, "What?" Like I agree with you. It didn't, it didn't make any sense. It was like you know when you watch them. Maybe that was their maybe that was their their ideal. You know how nowadays with the Marvels, you have like a post credit the scene. They wanted like the a post credit scene of the game. Yeah, the, the movies ended, and then you watch the the whole credits go up, and then they're just like, "Oh, here's like a thirty second clip of what's to come." Yeah. I wonder if that was what they were trying to do, but I felt I felt that was. It's, I think they cheapened the story it's, by doing it's that. It's so weird because it's... I, I get what you're saying, but like, it's different in a movie where you have the actors there, you have the costumes, you possibly have a set because you're filming in a real-world lo- location. That's all there. In a game, you have to design everything. So how many more weeks did they did they yeah. build this thing where they're like, hey, I thought we were done. Like, oh, we're, we're making a boss fight in a post credit scene? Like... Okay, like I don't. It just seemed like it wasn't ideal. I don't know. For me, it there is stuff like that. Like I, you know, movies or books or whatever. You're like, why is this still going? Like we all have that feeling of like, hey, I think this was a natural endpoint of this. We could walk away, but they're like, and there's more. And you're like, should there be though? Like I don't know. Um, so I can understand if that was the first. If that was the first fight, or maybe that was the end. 
fight and then and then the credits where they're walking towards their ship and yeah. then that's the end of the game yeah. it kind of felt like to me like you just mentioned like it was an afterthought they the game was over and then all of a sudden like a developer was like hey what if we write this in and then, I, I i don't know i think they should have ended it them walking down like the gang fight so yeah because like you said it's like a natural the end there yeah, they've completed sure. the thing they had the big emotional beat with nikki now they're you know, if you look at the story triangle that's been touted about, there's like, a, I'm, it's French, I think, but at the end, there's like a resolution where everything kind of comes down and you have a resolution. That's kind of like the end of your story. They had all that. The come down was them getting on the thing. Man, we didn't get a lot of money, but we may get enough money to refill and go to the next thing. That's kind of where you want the Guardians to be. Hey, we're not in the negative. We're kind of in a lateral move. Let's go forward, you know, get our money, get our fuel, go on to the next gig. And... Yeah, it, it, I don't know. I mean, overall, again, the game did surprise me. I think you would agree. It was surprising. like It, it was. And, and in a good way. And it those, I think, some of the people on the design team left to go to other studios, and they're, like, writing things still. So I, I'm excited to see what they move on to, to, you know, if that's the quality of writing you get and that team goes on to something else, I want to see what else they do, you know? Yeah. So I'm excited to see how that comes about or whatever. So I, w- I will say that, you know, as, as I started the game, uh, I really liked the story. About halfway through the game, I was actually getting annoyed by the, I wouldn't say the story necessarily. Well, I guess it's one and the same, like the stories and the characters. I liked that, how they introduced them. You got to know a little bit more about them rather than you know nothing about them, basically, in the movies, rather than everybody's family's died and that's why they're here. But I... I Clichéd, I really yeah. Like, the, yeah. So the thing I didn't like about it was, is, you know, when you have, everybody has that friend or that family member that every time you get together, it's always woe is me, right? Mm. You know? Thanks for uh, Loki calling me out, Martin. Thanks for Loki calling me out. (laughs) Yeah, here we go. But, you know, they just can't seem to uh, get over the fact. And I get that. But, like, throughout the entire movie, you're in it, and all of a sudden, they're just like, whoa, my daughter died. And they're like, whoa, well, I I killed my own sister. Whoa. And it's just, Mm. it's just non-stop what I didn't like about it is it was non-stop throughout the game like a little mi- like a non-stop misery yeah I, it was I, I do like Peter was trying his best to like bring everybody back down hey you know what we're, we're family you know we can get th- get through this together but when you have three other people all with it's horrible and Peter's like listen I get it I lost my mom but yeah. hey we can get through this and it was like he was constantly trying to hold them together and Maybe that's what the whole point of it was, but I, I could feel Peter's... Uh, like the drain of him just having to wake yes. up every morning and be like, oh, I gotta... And maybe, yeah. that's, maybe that was their point. Maybe yeah, I think I think that was because it, they do really enforce the leadership thing, and I do like that idea of like, man, it's rough keeping people together, especially if everybody just... Yeah. They had moments where they just didn't want to be together, where they're just like, yeah. why are we doing this, you know? Um I don't know. I'm, I'm whatever that team does. Hopefully, they're able to do more. I'm yeah. looking forward to them doing more. The writing team definitely. And again, I, I think them looking over everything, going, you know, should we have a post credit scene? Probably not. If they got another crack at it, maybe we can make his blasters a little bit more powerful. Maybe we could reinforce this. Hey, we've been through all this. Like, yeah, now we know what it is together. Remember, we did all that stuff with the, you know, the evil space cult. We figured that yeah. out. You know, like. I would. It would be interesting to see how that we've gone through the origin. Now we're a team, and how does that how does that build into the next mission or job? Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I I hope their that team is somehow able to continue on. So yeah. Um, I don't in whatever way. Maybe it'll just be the writers writing another project where you're like, well, I guess I have to watch that now because they weren't able to come together for Guardians 2 or whatever because, you know, everybody got traded off and moved on. Some I think some people moved on and some people are part of the Embracer Group Collective. They own a lot of studios, so I don't know. Hopefully they're happy. I mean, they probably weren't yeah. given options when they left. So anyway, yeah, I Maybe. did enjoy the movie or the movie. I, I enjoyed the game a lot. <laughs> So I, I did too. Like, um, it, it's something that, you know, because we always talk about is everything's been done before, right? So yeah. how is somebody going to put their own little twist on something that's constantly been done? And I, I don't think that what they did has really ever been done before. And I, I really enjoyed yeah. 
I really enjoyed how how they did it and how they put it together. Uh, you got a you got battle scenes and you got grief that's been done before, but in the sense of the story, us coming together to fight the overall collective, and then right. them battling each other out. But the fact that they can lean on each other, and they mm-hmm. had a leader in Quill that could um, bring them all together. And even Quill, Quill had his moments to where even Rocket was like, you know, Quill. I mean, you're you're the reason why we look up to you. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. You're the reason why it holds us together as a family. So even even Quill in his moment was even uh, held back down uh, because uh, Rocket was able to hold him down. And yeah, and they, so it's, it, it was it was never been done before, I don't believe, like they've done, and they presented a pretty good, solid overall yeah. game. And it, yeah, it is, it is sad that they, they're not going to get a two. Uh, but again, maybe it's just trying to keep tabs on the team, and maybe I'll email you or text you or be like, hey, people that worked on this are working on this new game. We should check it out or whatever, you know, For because sure. uh, I definitely want to see what they do. But... Thanks, Martin, for uh, you know playing the game. I know it took a while. It took me a while too to beat it. It seems like there was always another chapter, but it was good. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. there was a couple of boss battles that bugged out on me though too. So one afternoon I played. There was that one uh, boss battle with the Beastmaster. She calls that weird flying squid on you. It's like one of the first big boss battles. That glitched out for me, and I kept doing the same thing over and over again, and it wouldn't... I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And I had to like look at a video going, well, the one thing they're showing in their video has not happened yet, so I guess I'm just going to keep playing this until that event triggers. Oh, and I was, it was like an hour. I'm like, dude, I know I'm not the best at games, but this can't take this long. Luckily, it triggered. I was able to move on. I was like, oh, never again. Never again. I don't want to fight a flying squid, so... Yeah, well, I never, I never, never uh, glitched out on me. So thankfully, but uh, yeah, man, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure as usual, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I yeah, uh, like I said, I'll keep tabs on the team and I'll text you or whatever if they, whatever they come out with next. So yeah, cool, perfect. I'm down for that. Cool. So that was it. That was um, that was Martin and I talking about, uh, you know, the thing, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, we both really enjoyed it, I think, uh, truth be told. But uh, yeah, I want to remind you guys before we get out of here that this podcast will hit my website, www.gamewithgrief.com, Monday morning at 7 a.m. Please go there and let me know what you think of the show. You can also subscribe to the podcast on either Apple to iTunes, the Google Play Store, or Spotify. So go to those places. Subscribe to the podcast. You can also find the audio. It goes up day and date at um, on YouTube. You can also write to me at gwgpodfellows at gmail.com. Go there, write me a line. Let me know what you think of the show. And you can also find me on Twitter at Just Little Joe. So go to those places. Let me know what you think of the show. I will talk to you guys again next week. Goodbye.